In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a Hacker News clone using Node, and we're going to do so by following along with the How to GraphQL documentation. So the first thing we need to do is create a source directory and put an index file in it. To use GraphQL, we're going to import the NPM package called GraphQL Yoga, so let's go ahead and do that. Now that we have GraphQL Yoga installed, we can require the package in our index file and destructure out the GraphQL server from it. Now, if you're not familiar with GraphQL, this next bit of syntax may look a little bit strange at first, but um, what we're going to do is store our types in a template string and then assign that to a typedefs variable. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create our resolvers, and this is going to be stored in memory as an object. And inside this object is where we'll have both the query and mutation properties. And so in the query property, we'll assign that an object um, which will contain different methods. And just to get things started, we will start out with an info method. And this method's just going to go ahead and return us a string. So now that we have our type defs and our resolvers, what we can do is just new up um, the GraphQL server that we've imported at the top. And once we new up that class, we'll just save that as the server. And we can actually pass into that, that GraphQL server an object which contains type defs and resolvers and assign those values to themselves. All right, so now that we've created our server, all we need to do is call start on the server and then we can check it out in the browser. So GraphQL gives you this really nice interface once you hit the server from your browser. You can check out the schema, it gives you all the query info, what types you have. So if I go here and type info, you can see it gives us back the data. You'll also see in a little bit that we're going to be creating mutations from the console, but for now this is just a simple query to show that our server's hooked up and it's working. Um, but yeah, pretty soon we'll be doing mutations and we can create all sorts of data straight from the console here. So you can see in our type devs we've already created a type that we've called query, um, but what we're going to do now is we're actually going to create a second type called link, and this link type is going to be assigned to a feed value that's in the query type. And this feed value is going to be represented as a, an array or list of links. So this is how that works. Now, at this point, you might be looking at the code and noticing a couple differences in the syntax. You might be wondering what the square brackets are for, uh, what the exclamation mark is for. And basically what's going on is the square bracket signifies that uh, the value that's returned is going to be an array. Um, so in this case with link, we have an array or a list of links. And then the exclamation mark just simply means that the, the value is required. So what we can do now is mock our own database since we're not hooked up to a database quite yet. And this way we can test and make sure that our type defs and our resolvers all, are all working correctly. So we're just going to go down here below and create a links array. Now that we have our links array and we have our type defs all declared, what we can do is go down to our resolvers and in query, we can just create a new resolver called feed and this resolver will give back links. So in order for our links query to work, we're going to add a link resolver, and this link resolver is going to have several methods, each of which will take in a parameter, and in this parameter, we will be able to get back the associated value that's attached to its parent. All right, so now we can go ahead and check out and make sure everything's working correctly. So if we go over to our localhost 4000 and we put in our feed, give it an ID, URL, and description for values that we want back, this query is going to return exactly what we declared in our database. And what's cool is over here on the side, we can see our different types and we can go to the docs and it'll tell us what each type returns, a string, an ID, pretty cool stuff in here. So the next thing we're going to want to do is add the ability to post to our feed. And to do so, we're going to have to first create a mutation type. And this mutation type will have a post method that we'll eventually create in the resolvers. But for now, 
it'll be represented as a post that takes in arguments and we can put it in this mutation type that it's going to give back a link. The next thing I want to do is clean up our code a little bit here. We have this big, huge type def string. And what we can do is take all of those types and put it into its own file. And we'll call this file the schema file. And it'll just clean things up quite a bit. All right, so now that we've cleaned up our code and refactored it a little bit, we're going to be adding a couple things here. We're going to add um, the ability to count each ID from the links array. And we're also going to be adding the post mutation. And this post mutation takes in an args argument, which is how we'll be able to access each property that we've defined on the, the post type. So you can see here that we'll be creating a link object that has attributes and each attribute is linked up to the types that we've declared in our schema. And what we'll end up doing is pushing that link that we've created into the links array above. Because we don't have our type defs declared in this file anymore, we're going to have to point to our schema.graphql file. So down where the server is declared and we've assigned it to the new GraphQL server, we need to pass in uh, type defs and have it pointing over to the GraphQL schema. Now we can go ahead and run our server and see if our post mutation is working. And you probably noticed earlier I had a syntax error um, just over here where the ID count is. So let's go ahead and fix that. So if we jump back over here to the console, you can see that we've got our post mutation. And that post mutation takes in the arguments with a URL description and we've assigned those values, and then we're just saying, hey, give us back the ID once this successfully posts. Now that we've sent our post mutation, we can go ahead and do a feed query and get back our ID, our URL, and our description. At this point in the tutorial, we're gonna go over Prisma, and if you're not familiar with Prisma, it's basically an ORM for GraphQL, and it's gonna generate a lot of code for us, it's gonna generate a lot of the CRUD operations and it's going to just make it really nice so that we can link up our logic with the database and we don't have to do a lot of extra work and it just kind of handles things behind the scenes. As you can see we've created our data model file and we've created our Prisma YAML file and the data model file we're just going to go ahead and do something similar to what we did in the schema where we create our types and it's going to allow us to create associations and hook up the database, as I mentioned. And then in the Prisma YAML is where we're going to instruct uh, Prisma how to uh, hit an endpoint and just kind of all the infrastructure setup. In order to use Prisma, we're going to have to add it globally, and then we're going to have to deploy it from the command line. And once it's deployed, we can go ahead and select just the demo for the database. After we run Prisma deploy, you can see it generates this nice endpoint for us. And what's really cool is if we run Prisma generate, it's going to go ahead and create um, all sorts of files and then schema definitions for us. So now that we have our Prisma data model all hooked up, we can go ahead and delete our links array. And what we can do instead is with our feed method, we can access the context that we pass in as a parameter. And from that context, we have access to Prisma, which then gives us access to our links that are stored in the database. We can now go into our mutation resolver and refactor our post method, and we can use the create link function that Prisma generates for us. And this function is going to take in a URL and description, and we can access those values off of the arcs. The last thing we need to do is add a context property on our server and then require in the Prisma client and assign that client to the context property.
if we go ahead and spin up our server, we can see that our post mutation works and it's sending to the database. And we can check that everything's working well by doing a feed query and we get back our ID and description. And that's it for this tutorial. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, you can do so by clicking the red subscribe button below. And please like this video if you found this helpful. Thanks.